Okay, we're back and now we're going to talk about dietary fiber. Oops, sorry. Okay, dietary fiber. Um, it's composed composed of um, complex carbohydrates, and these complex carbohydrates, you know, are called non-starch polysaccharides. So you have polysaccharides with a starch, for example, you know, um, from bread, and then there are non-starch polysaccharides. Now, non-starch saccharides, um, short form is NSP, they cannot be digested by the body. So basically, you eat them in one form, and by the time they pass out from the other side of you, they are pretty much more or less in the same form, so they don't get digested, okay? You classify them into two groups, insoluble and soluble dietary fiber. Now, insoluble dietary fiber, um, like it says, it doesn't dissolve in water. What it does is, is that it absorbs water and it adds bulk to waste material in your large intestine. Soluble dietary fiber, on the other hand, it does dissolve in water and it, it forms this gel-like material. So two examples of, of soluble dietary fiber are pectin and gum. And pectin comes from plums and apples, while gum comes from the bark of the acacia tree. So if you want to just see what pectin is like, you just need to take some apple seeds and put them in the dish and leave it for a while with some water. And you'll notice that the water will actually start to turn very like gel-like, like jelly. That's the pectin coming out from the seeds into the water. Okay, you can also get um, soluble dietary fiber from fruits and vegetables as well as some whole grain uh, foods. So now let's talk about insoluble dietary fiber and like the name suggests, it doesn't dissolve in water. It's generally found in the stems, leaves and skins of vegetables. Um, you know, like if you ate a piece of celery and you've got that stringy bit that you can't chew through, that's definitely um, insoluble dietary fiber. So other good sources of insoluble dietary fiber include wholemeal bread, vegetables, cereals and legumes. So, um, you know, insoluble dietary fiber is basically cellulose and hemicellulose. And these are the ones that you can't actually, um, that, you know, they're very tough when you chew them. Okay. Oh, these slides are a bit confusing. Okay, soluble dietary fiber can also be found in fruit, such as citrus fruit. And apples, berries, potatoes, and cereals such as oats and barley, and you can also get them in some pulses. All right, so now we move on to the functions of dietary fiber. The first function is that it maintains a healthy digestive system. Now, as mentioned earlier, insoluble dietary fiber will absorb absorb the water and make the waste material large soft and bulky and you know it lubricate that you know the absorbing of water and making it bulky helps to lubricate it through your large intestine and it prevents constipation now if you're preventing constipation you're going to keep yourself from getting um, a lot of intestinal diseases so we'll move into that in a little while um, dietary fiber also helps to lower blood cholesterol levels because soluble dietary fiber um, in your gut you imagine it's this gel like material actually Helps, helps to bind to the cholesterol and it prevents your your system from actually absorbing it. Same for the third function, which is helping to regulate blood glucose levels. So again, because of that soluble dietary fiber forming the gum-like material in your gut, it helps helps to slow down the the rate of absorption of glucose into your bloodstream and hence helps to regulate your blood glucose level. Okay, um, fourth one is that it provides a high satiety value. So soluble dietary fiber has the ability to absorb water and expand. And, you know, because it's a gum-like material, again, it's going to help to slow down the movement of the food through your digestive tract. So it's like putting glue through your digestive tract in a, in a way, kind of like glue, but in a good way. So because the food is going slowly through your gut, you feel full for longer instead of it, you know, just zipping through and then you have this empty feeling again. So it helps you, stops you from overeating. So very good for people who are trying to lose weight. So how much dietary fiber should you take? Um, we take our recommendations from the Singapore Healthy Diet Pyramid. All right. Um, and, you know, from the diet pyramid, you actually have two sections where you're going to get dietary fiber from. The obvious one is from the fruit and vegetables section where you are encouraged to have two servings of fruit and vegetable each 
per day. So that's two fruit and two vegetables. Now, out of the rice and alternatives food group, um, you're recommended to have six to seven servings of rice and alternatives. But out of the six to seven servings, you're recommended to have two to three servings of whole grain food. So that's, you know, brown rice, wholemeal bread, wholemeal pasta, barley, stuff like that. Okay, so how do you increase your dietary fiber intake? Uh, very obvious ways, eat more vegetables and every real snack on high fiber foods such as nuts, seeds and dried fruit. Love nuts, you know, really great for you. Lots of good oils, got fiber, lots of protein. Uh, dried fruit has fiber in it but can be quite high in sugar so be careful about that. Choose whole grains, so brown rice instead of you know white rice, wholemeal bread instead of white bread. And when baking, try and use wholemeal flour instead of plain flour. So you can do little bits of substitution here and there, which is good. Okay, so how does um, dietary fiber affect your health? Now, if you have not enough dietary fiber, it can lead to constipation. So your feces actually become very hard and dry. I mean, just try and imagine um, doing your number two, your big business, trying to pass out rocks, you know, really small, hard rocks it'd be very painful you know so you want to avoid that and if you keep getting constipation you actually increase your risk of colorectal cancer diverticulosis and hemorrhoids so we're going to talk a little bit more about that so what are these three things so diverticulosis is small out blown out pouches developing in your intestinal wall so you actually see these little lumps at the side of the intestine those are pouches and um, this causes waste matter to be forced out of the colon. Colon, it's very painful, very uncomfortable. The other one is colorectal cancer. Um, this is when cancerous cells develop on the colon or rectal area of the large intestine. This is the number one killer cancer of men in Singapore. Just for your information. Now it's theorized that when you get constipation, now your feces are full of toxins and stuff that your body wants to get rid of. Now, if you're constipated, your feces are sitting around, you know, in your large intestine because they can't move out your body. And the longer it sits there, the more time your, the toxins in your feces actually have to get reabsorbed by your large intestine. And so, you know, all that sort of, they say, encourages cancer cells to develop. All right, last one is hemorrhoids. And this disease is also known as piles which is a very, very painful disease. My friend's father just had this recently and um, it was, you know, sometimes the piles can bleed and my friend's dad was actually bleeding for a few days and had to go for an operation to remove the piles, which is when you get these extra lumps forming um, either just near or outside of your anus and it's due to, you know, straining too much during defecation, which is, you know, just sounds bad all around. So, you know, Make sure you eat enough fiber, drink enough water so you don't get constipation. Okay, on the other hand, you know, when you have too much fiber intake, that can be a problem as well. Um, it can cause problems such as intestinal gas or bloating. So, uh, yeah, you too can tend to get a lot of gas if you have too much fiber and it can be very embarrassing because you're farting a lot. Excess fiber, excess fiber, sorry, also prevents the absorption of certain nutrients into your body. So it can, like, bind to minerals um, and stop them from being absorbed so that's a bit of a problem um, a high fiber diet also can be a problem for very young children because um, you know it, it does bulk you know it creates its high satiety value and um, it keeps them full and then they won't, won't be able to eat the other high nutritious things you know so I want to be mindful of that um, the elderly can suffer from constipation as well if they don't get enough water together with their fiber, high fiber diet. Um, the elderly's bodies require an increased amount of water, therefore lack of water causes waste matter to become hard, difficult and can't be passed out of the body. You know, basically what I just said earlier. Okay, and that's pretty much the end of the dietary fiber and water lesson. Thank you.